Hi guys, so we're going to go through a 30 minute um, express glute and lower body workout. You're going to need a chi ball, an exercise band and or you can also use a fabric circle band such as these. These have a bit more resistance and you also don't have to tie them so they can be a better option for you. Um, we're going to do a series of exercises in different positions. So you're going to start standing upright. I'm going to just walk myself back from the camera so you can see me. Take hold of your band, either your fabric or your um, exercise band here. And I want you to begin by placing it over your legs, just at the top of your knees where your VMO sit. So what we're going to start with is called crabbed walk. You're going to start at one end of your mat for me. Lift the sternum upright, relax the shoulder blades down. Switch onto your T-zone, take a breath in. I want you to push your knees, externally rotate out from the hip joint and keep tension on your band. Now we're going to begin with a little squat position. So hinging over the belt, push the tailbone down, coming into your nice hip range here. We're going to keep the tension on the band as we exhale, push outwards, walk out of the line of your hip joint, and then bring your opposite foot to me. Keep the feet at hip width. Start squatting into the pattern and walking out into the crab walk here. If you find this is going into your lumbar spine, you can take a slightly higher position through the back. The lower you squat in this position with hip flexion, the more you'll be working into your glute meat as well as the glute max. Now we really want to keep tension on the band here. We're walking from one end of your mat to the other, walking outside of the hip line. So placing the foot wider than your hip width and bringing the opposite foot to me, keeping that tension on the band at all times. If you'd like, you can take the band off at any point in this workout, but we're going to just do a few more crab walks here. Just 10 more seconds, walking to one end of the mat and to the other. Now, if you gaze, if you see me gaze down towards the end of the mat or just at this corner, corner point of the room, I've got a little timer on. Last one. Beautiful. From this point, stand upright. Relax. Let the glutes have a moment off. Your next exercise is squat to hip extension. Let me turn to the side. Keep that external rotation of your knees pushing outwards into the band. Lift the sternum. Switch back onto T-zone. Take a lovely soft breath in. We begin by letting the tailbone push back from your heels. Drop the tailbone down as we bend through the knees, coming into a nice neutral spine and squat. Exhale, push into your feet. Lift the sternum upright by scooping the belly. At the top point here, load onto one leg, take a breath in. You can keep your toes on the ground as you exhale, squeeze your glute max and drive your heel back. Then we're going to bring the foot back down, take a breath in, come back to squat. Inhale to lower that buttocks down. Exhale to scoop the belly, push off. Load onto one side, inhale, push the heel back. Squeeze your glute max, use the resistance of your bands here, keep your hips facing forwards. Inhale, place the foot and come into squat. Now you're going to alternate through your squat and hip extension here. We are really trying to hold the spine upright and use the abdominals to support your glute activity. So as you lift the spine upright, coming into that nice lift of the sternum, push the heel back, hips stay facing forwards. You'll notice a little bend in my supporting knee here. I want to make sure I'm keeping my hip, my knee and my foot aligned on that standing one leg balance in our hip extension. We're just going to do a few more here. Squat to hip extension. Nice. Let's do one more each side. Squat. Exhale to push the spine upright. Inhale, load, push the heel back. Exhale to squeeze. Inhale to squat. Lovely. Come back to standing upright. Have a little break. Let the glutes switch off for a moment. The next one is walking forwards and back. These are known as monster walks. We're again going to take that slight hip flexion position. So from the side, the tailbone lowers. As we bend through the hip joint itself, keeping the lumbar spine neutral, the chest stays upright. I'm going to switch back to face you. Externally rotate your knees into the band from the hip joint, keep the tension on. Now we're going to walk ourselves back. The foot places behind the hip bone and then we bring the opposite foot to knee. We're keeping tension on the band and the feet hip width as we walk ourselves back. Once we've reached the back of the room here, we're then going to start to walk forwards. Now these are a little bit of a funny position here. We're keeping tension on the band at all times. From the side, I want you to make sure that you keep the tailbone lowered and the lumbar spine neutral to keep loading into the glutes. 
The lower you take in your hip flexion position and a deeper bend in the knee will make these a lot more challenging on the buttocks. If this attention shifts into the lower back, I want you to bring the chest more upright, use more of a standing upright position rather than coming into a deep flexion of this hip joint. We're gonna walk forwards and back. Now, as I'm timing us here, we're working for roughly 40 seconds on for each of these warm up exercises. We're gonna do last seven seconds here, walking forwards and back with our monster walks, keep externally rotating the knee out, into the band to keep loading the glutes, to keep that lovely workload going. Four seconds. Funny exercises today. Last one. Beautiful. Come back up, right? Let go of the glutes for a moment. Excellent, from this point, roll the band off, place it to the edge of the mat, we'll come back to that now. So, you can use these exercises if you are a runner, they're great for warming up this uh, posterior uh, chain that you'll be using. We're gonna roll ourselves down. So, let's start by lifting up right, a deep breath in. Let me bring myself in line with my camera. Drop the chin to the chest. Sink and roll the ribs towards the hips. Exhale, let the back round. Follow the fingertips and the crown to the mat. Let the spine lengthen here. Take a nice soft breath in. Relax your neck joint. Let your arms soften from that armpit joint. Feeling the stretch on the back of the legs, maybe along the back of the knee joint into those calves. Just relax and take a few breaths in here. I want you to bend one knee and try to straighten out one leg. If you need to meet the mat, you can always pop something down under your hand, such as a yoga block. We're gonna bend the opposite knee as we stretch out behind the back of the knee on the other leg. Inhale into center, exhale to bend, and inhale. Now these little marching um, exercise here in our forward fold, I want you to just let the upper back hang and just let yourself feel the calf stretch the hamstring stretch that's occurring on one side of the body at the time. Let's do one more each side here, just letting the upper back round, letting that little stretch occur. Come back to two feet on the mat, knees are soft, melt your fingertips closer as you walk yourself down and out. Now bring yourself to the mat, hands and knees down. I'm gonna shift back to my mat here now. From this point, we're now going to pick up our chi ball. You wanna make sure it's fully inflated, and you wanna now pop it between your calf and your hamstring in your knee crook. Now we do wanna make sure that we are holding the ball and if it's too much on your hamstring or you're cramping in that posterior chain, you can take the ball away. We're simply gonna be working into our horse kick from here. So my aim is to set shoulders over palms, up back flattening, T-zone on. Squeezing the ball between your calf and your hamstring. Let's squeeze the glute mats to float the knee of paper slip from the mat. Now for this exercise, inhale the knee comes towards your chest. You can push the heel back behind you. I want you to squeeze your glute and drive your heel bone up. Notice that I'm keeping the lumbar spine neutral and the hips level. Inhale, knee comes towards the chest. Exhale, push the heel out, squeeze the glute max, drive the heel up to squeeze that buttocks. Inhale, knee comes in. It's a smaller range than your usual horse kick, but if you feel the need to revert back to your mat work, you can take the ball away and just use your normal. You can have a soft foot here, or if you choose, you can also flex the foot, which might give you a deeper connection to that glute max that you're trying to squeeze as you push the heel back, squeezing your ball between your buttocks, uh, between your hamstring and your calf even. Good, we're gonna work for six. Push the heel back, exhale, squeeze, and inhale. Good. Excellent, three more. Squeeze that buttocks, push the heel back, squeeze that ball. Your last one, drive your heel back, squeeze your glute max, press the heel bone up, squeeze that ball. Lovely, inhale, come back. Have a little break, you might like to just push your bum back, squashing your ball here as you take some time off your wrists. We're gonna move into a little bit of abduction now. If you'd like, this exercise can be performed down on these forearms rather than up in this four-point kneeling position. I'll show you that alternative here. We're going to keep the ball on the same side. We're going to drop down to the forearms if you'd like to take weight off the wrists. You still need to flatten the upper back. 
So I don't want you to round or let the lumbar spine arch here. We want to actively work through a neutral spine. So you're going to take the time to lift the pelvic floor and switch back onto that T-zone. Push off the upper back here. Again, once more, we need to find that little recruitment of squeezing your ball between your hamstring and your calf. Notice that your, your uh, knee is stacked underneath your hip joint, even if you're lowered down on your forearms here. Now we're going to go into abduction. So we squeeze the ball. I want you to push the heel back, squeezing your glute max, drive the heel up like you did in that previous exercise. Now I want you to imagine that you're going to draw your um, knee quite wide of the body, but keep the hip bones stacked and then circle the knee back to the mat. We're going to push the heel back, squeezing the glute max. Imagine that you're trying to bring the inside of your thigh um, parallel to your mat as you widen the knee out to the side and bring it down. Push the heel back, squeeze. Think about drawing a circle from the hip joint here. Good. We're trying to keep the lumbar spine neutral throughout. So we're going to squeeze the glute, push the heel back, exhale. Try to keep the hip bones stacked as we circle the knee out to the side. Inner thigh showing towards the mat and then bring it back down. We're going to do three to make ten. If you find this is too much, come back to your lovely horse kick or swimming legs. Your last one. Beautiful. Come back to the mat. Have a little break. Pop that ball out for a second. Shoot the glutes back towards the heels. And let's change sides. So I'm going to change sides to show you here now. If you'd like, the ball can disappear. Otherwise, we're popping the ball back between that lovely calf and hamstring group. We're holding onto the ball in the knee pit. This is optional. You can come back to a horse kick from your mat work classes without the ball. Set the shoulder over the palm, or you can come down to that forearm position, but make sure you're not letting the upper back slop or pushing to round the upper back. We still want that flat upper back connection and switching back onto TISO. We've got the lovely neutral spine. We're gonna squeeze the ball between the calf and the hamstring. Exhale to lift through the belly and float the knee from the mat. Inhale, the knee comes towards the chest. Push the heel back, squeeze the glute max, exhale, drive the heel bone up. Think about the hips staying stacked and turn to your mat. Inhale, knee in. If you'd like, you can always flex the foot to push the heel back. Now, we're not trying to displace this lovely flattening of the upper back. We also want the T-zone to stay on and keep those hips level, turn towards your mat. This is a smaller range than your horse kick here. So I do want you to use that squeeze of your ball between your calf and your hamstring to keep yourself aligned. Good, squeeze, exhale, push the heel back, inhale in. Good, you've got 10 seconds. Good, three, two, let's get one more. Beautiful, bring the knee down for a little break. You can shoot back if you need. Let's move into that little abduction series, which is called cars. We're going to bring ourselves down to the forearms if it suits you. Otherwise, stay up stacked over your palm and wrist. I want to make sure I'm flattening the upper back. I'm back to switching on the T zone. The hips are stacked underneath the hip joint. Squeezing the ball once again between your calf and your hamstring here, getting that lovely ignition that you want through that posterior chain. You can have a slightly flexed foot if you'd like, but we're going to begin T-zone on, pushing the heel up, exhaling to squeeze the glute max. Coming into that lovely hip extension that we were just working on. Now we're going to turn the knee out to the side. The inner thigh shows towards the mat. We're drawing a big circle as we bring the knee back on in. Pushing the heel back, exhale to squeeze. Nice widening of your inner thigh towards the mat. Knee out to the side and then come back on in. Exhale to squeeze. Coming into that lovely hip extension. Inhale in. Now these are called CARS, Controlled Articulate Rotations. We're coming into abduction, so I want you to make sure you're not letting your hips rotate out. We're using the thigh bone in the hip socket, and we're using that lovely glute med and max now. Push the heel back, squeezing your glute max, hips staying level. Think about rotating the knee out to the side, the inner thigh showing towards the mat, and as the knee comes back on in, inhale. Now we've only got four. Keep flattening the upper back, drawing the shoulder blades down. Your last two. Trying to keep hips level throughout. You might need to change your range of motion here. Your last one. 
Beautiful, come back to the mat. Pop the ball out for a little break. Shoot the glutes back towards the heels. Well done. Have a little rest here. Beautiful, let's move into our, our sideline next. Once again, grab hold of your band. Now again, you can use your fabric or you can use your elastic band. We're tying the band around the thighs, back above the BMO for me. If you'd like, use your fabric band if you want. You can bring the knees quite close together if you'd like to limit the resistance. And when you tie the band, uh, if you want to make the resistance harder, sorry. And when you tie the band, obviously you'll be working at a very, very strong resistance. So the more fingers you have between the knees is the less resistance that you'll have on the band. I like to work at least three fingers width between the knees here. We're gonna lay ourselves down inside lying. Now for these exercises, there are 10 uh, reps of each. We're starting with our lovely clam series. Legs are in 45. Shift the top hip bone forwards. Stack the hips by pushing the hip bone down, lifting the bottom waist. We're gonna squeeze the heel bones together, glute lead on the top leg on. As we exhale to flatten the T-zone, let's start to turn the knee on out and open up our clam. Hips stay level, inhale, knee comes in. Squeeze, exhale to open up your clam, pulling against your resistance band. Now you're really trying to connect to your glute knees and keep the hips stacked and level. So don't let the hip bone roll back, don't lose that bottom waist. Good, there are 10 reps, so you're already at number five. Squeeze, exhale to open and inhale to close. Beautiful, keep moving through your series here, keeping the flattening of your T-zone to keep your hips level. Using that lovely push outwards of the thigh to open up the knee into your band, glute knee firing. Three, beautiful, two, exhale to open, inhale to close, your last two. And your final one, squeeze. Lovely, keep your hips stacked, don't lose that bottom waist. Float the feet at hip height. Continue on into your clam two. Now we keep the feet floating. We squeeze our heels, exhale to open up into the band, our clam two. Again, there are 10 reps here. I'm on number three if you're following me. Try and keep your hips level, don't lose that bottom waist. You can always bring the feet back down and repeat your clam one having a little break if you need. I'm on my fifth rep. Good, keep working here. Squeezing the heels for our clam two. Exhaling to open. Hips staying stacked. Don't let your hip roll back. You can keep your hand on your top hip bone if you need. I've only got two more reps. Squeeze, exhale and inhale. Last one. Beautiful, feet come back down. Have a little break or follow me, no rest. We're gonna keep the bottom leg bent and shoot the top leg long. Now I wanna keep the leg flowing at about hip height and rotate the leg down from the thigh. Level one straight leg raise, push the heel up, inhale to lower. Trying to keep the knee and the foot rotated down from the hip joint, push the heel up and inhale to lower. Exhale and inhale. Level one, if it's working for you, keep the leg at your thigh alignment or your hip alignment I should say. Or if you'd like, sweep that leg a little bit further forwards and work at a slightly larger range here, keeping the turn down of the knee from the toe, uh, from the hip joint. You'll notice I'm getting flabbergasted. Ow, this is very intense work. I've got four. <sighs> Trying to keep the bottom waist up, hip stacked. Two. I don't like this one. Last one. Beautiful. Bring your leg back to hip height, floating, extend the leg away. Bottom waist stays up. Let's draw some little circles. Now the bottom edge of your circle is at hip height. You don't wanna lose resistance on the band, so let's sweep the leg forwards. Inhale, exhale, squeeze the glute max as we push the heel back and down. Good. Inhale, forwards, inhale. Exhale, back. Squeezing your glute max as you drive your heel up on that top edge of the circle and down. Good, this is working really hard now. We've got 10 in our, in our clockwise and then 10 in anti-clockwise. I've got two. Oh, my bum is burning. That's that glute knee working hard. Last one, hold the leg at hip height, reverse. Squeeze the glute max, drive the heel back. Sweep the leg up and over, inhale. Exhale, push the heel back. Now we're looking to keep the leg at hip height at the bottom edge of the circle. Don't forget you're working with resistance, so don't let the band go slack. 
Beautiful, I'm halfway. I'm really working to keep the bottom waist up now as my obliques are really fatiguing. So hand can be on the top hip to assist pushing the hip bone down. Keep lengthening the leg away. I've got two. Squeeze the glute, drive the heel back. My last one, ow, this is a lot of work. Good, bring the legs down, have a little break. Excellent, you were ready to repeat that on the other side. Push yourself on up. Let's change side line here. Clam one, clam two, straight leg raise and circles. Bring yourself to lay down here. Adjust your band if you need. You might like more resistance or less. Now, as you repeat these exercises, you might like to add more resistance. Perfect. Starting with your clam one, stack the legs at 45. Hand on the top hip bone, push the hip bone down, stack the pelvis as well as lift the bottom waist. Squeeze the heels, top hip bone forwards, exhale T-zone flattens as we externally rotate the knee into the band to open your clam, inhale to close. Exhale, squeeze those heels and open. Inhale to close. Now your clam, don't let your hips roll back. We're not looking for spinal rotation. Hips stay rotated forwards towards the edge line of your mat here. You can keep your hand on your pelvis if you need to remind yourself not to take the hip bone back as you really open up into your resistance. You're working your glute knee on your top leg, so don't forget that lovely heel squeeze and the flattening of your T-zone, which starts the opening of your clam. Good, I've got three, two, and one. Excellent. From this point, bottom waist stays up. Uh, float the feet at hip height. Trying to keep the T-zone working as you now go into your clam two. Heels stay floating. Exhale, squeeze those heels, flattening across your belt line to open up your clam. Now working into your resistance, you're starting to really fatigue the glute med here as well as working into this external thigh. So I do want you to make sure that if you need to, the feet come back down, you can have a little break and repeat your clam one or take the band off completely. I've got four left, exhale to squeeze and open and inhale to close. A lot of work in these glutes here, so it may not suit you to have the band on your last one. Beautiful, feet come back down, bottom waist stays up. We're working against the time limit here. Shoot the top leg out long at hip height, lengthening away. Rotate the leg in and down from the hip joint. Exhale to push the heel up and inhale to lower. Really try to keep your straight leg raised without losing your bottom waist. Push the heel up, exhale and inhale to lower. Really try to monitor that whole leg turned in from the hip joint. If you'd like, make it harder by shifting the top leg slightly further forwards, halfway between your buttocks and your bottom knee. Now we're not losing resistance on the band, you're working against it here, so push the heel up, exhale and inhale to lower. Really monitor that bottom waist too. I've got five, four, three, beautiful. If you'd like, there could be a little rest here. Or on your last straight leg raise, hold the leg at hip height for circles. Sweep the leg forwards, inhale. Push the heel up and back, squeezing your glute max. Keep your top hip forwards. The bottom edge of your circle is at that hip height. So as the foot comes to hip height, inhale, sweep it forwards and up. Squeeze the glute max, drive the heel back. Coming into that lovely range of hip extension. We're trying to keep the hip bone stacked. Sweep the leg up. Inhale, push the heel back, squeeze your glute max. Exhale. Beautiful. Two more circles before we reverse it. Are your glutes burning? Mine are. Hold the leg at hip high. Let's reverse. Push the heel back, squeezing your glute max. Lift the leg on up. Inhale, sweep it forwards. Keep the leg turned in and down from the hip joint here. The bottom edge of that circle is at hip height, working with your band. Push the heel back, squeeze the glute max and up. Inhale. Beautiful. Working really hard to keep the bottom waist lifted from the mat here. T-zone still flattening to keep the hip bones forwards. Your final two. Ah. Extra work on those glutes, last one. Excellent, bring the legs back down to 45 to rest. Push yourself on up. 
Take the band off for a second. We'll come back to that in a moment. Let's grab your ball. Let's lay on our back for a little bit of some supine work here. Lay yourself down, get comfortable with your neutral spine. You might even need something underneath that head. I'm gonna take hold of my full ball and pop it back between my DMO. From this point here, I wanna make sure that I'm able to keep the neutral spine as I switch on to the lift of pelvic floor and T-zone. Melt the shoulder blades back, relax the arms by your side or open up the palms, taking the arms out wide for pendulum. If you'd like to stay feet on the mat, Bring your big toe, bring your heel bone together so the inside sole line of your feet are meeting. If you'd like to work in double leg tabletop, you can bring yourself up one foot at a time, once again, closing that inner sole line. If you're working in tabletop, knee over, over the hip joint and let's begin. We're just holding the ball as we inhale, roll both legs over the hip joint here. Keep your eye line um, focused on the ceiling, squeeze the ball, exhale, scoop out T-zone, return the knees to center. Good, come back to floating that ball in the VMO as we inhale, roll both legs over one side of the body. The ribs are closing as we squeeze the ball, exhale, scoop out the belly, return the legs back to center. Nice, inhale, keep the shoulder blades on the mat here. Squeeze the ball, exhale, ribs draw in, scoop out the T-zone, knees to center. Lovely work. Relax the neck joint, relax the shoulder girdle completely onto the mat. Think about this connection that you're creating across the upper body, helping you to stabilize that spine. If you are working feet down, you will have a slightly different range of motion. And I want you to make sure that you're letting one outer sole line lift from the mat here, so you're able to keep the knees stacked and aligned. If you find that you're skewing off, at the knees, you're also skewing off across this uh, pelvis. So we're rotating through your lovely thoracic spine, trying to keep that pelvis aligned. So as you inhale the legs over, the outside sole line will float from the mat. Squeeze the ball, scoop in through the ribs, scoop the belly out, exhale, return the legs to center. If you're working in tabletop, Make sure you're not tempted to lose that lovely upper back connection. We're gonna do one more each side. Inhale, legs over. Keep the feet closed. Squeeze, exhale to center. One more, inhale. And exhale. Beautiful, come back to center. Knees can come to chest or feet can come down one at a time whilst you have a little break here. Nice, we're gonna go into pelvic curl next. So if you'd like, you can walk your feet a little bit closer to your buttocks. I'm walking myself up because there's something slightly irregular underneath my mat that's causing a little bit of imbalance there. We're gonna keep the ball floating in the BMO. We start with a lovely neutral lumbar spine. Relax the shoulders, arms by side, switching back on with a big breath in. Now I'd like you to let your pelvis tilt back towards the mat here. So as we let the hip bones roll back towards the rib cage, lumbar spine meets the mat. We're gonna squeeze our glutes, push into our heels. You're just keeping your ball floating here. Now we start to lift through that pelvis first. Exhale to lift the lumbar spine, the mid back from the mat. Coming up to your lovely pelvic curl for a breath in. Ribs are softly drawn in, the lumbar spine's not arched, glutes and hammies are on. As we bring the upper back back down on the exhale, just let the ball float in the VMO. We're not squeezing or bursting it here. We're trying to keep our knees aligned to the ceiling as we roll down, placing the weight of your pelvis down slowly. Inhale, come back to a lovely neutral spine and switch the glutes off before you go again. Again, tuck the hip bones back towards the ribs. Exhale, squeeze the glutes, push into the heels, and lift your pelvis off. Just keep your ball floating between your VMO. There's no squeezing or bursting it here. As we come to the top, take your breath in, check your ribs are softly drawn in. Good, on the exhale, melt the rib cage back down. Each vertebrae coming back down to the mat, lumbar spine, then pelvis. Inhale, come back to that lovely neutral spine. If you'd like, this can be your pelvic curl and this could be where you would like to stay for this exercise. You might like to try a little bit of a marching series, holding the ball in the VMO. This is quite challenging. If you'd like, as you roll yourself up on the exhale to come into your lovely pelvic curl, take a deep breath in. Notice that you're trying to keep the alignment of your pelvis lifted from the mat. Push into your heel bone, 
on your, on your right side, let's say, as we squeeze the right glute, exhale, lift your left foot. You can bring your left knee up. Inhale, bring your foot back down. Try to keep your hips stacked. Push into the left foot now, squeezing the left glute to lift the right foot. It's not a large lift. It's only a small one, and you may notice that the ball slightly rolls onto the upper portion of your thigh as you try and keep your hips level. We can go for a couple of foot lifts on each side. A small range of motion here. If you find that you're able to keep the hips stacked, come back to your pelvic curl, roll down. You might like to reset, take the ball away and work through a larger range of movement. We're gonna roll on up, coming up to pelvic curl bridge, keeping the ribs soft, softly drawn in, the lumbar spine not arched. If you'd like, you might like to work through a larger range of motion, keeping the hips lifted, pushing into one glute and one heel. As we exhale, lift the opposite. Your knee can lift directly over your pelvis, trying to create a lovely neutral spine throughout, trying to keep the hips level. If you find that as you lift one foot off, your buttock drops back down, I want you to really encourage that lovely glute max recruitment that you need to keep the hips up and level. We're running out of time. So if you'd like, let's make this our final rep here. Roll the spine back down and have a little break. Beautiful. From this position, switch off. Have a little rest while I switch off my timer. Good work. So we've come to the end of the workout. We are now going to stretch the glutes in off in our supine four, figure four stretch. We're gonna go into this from a single leg tabletop. So from your neutral spine, switch back on, float one foot off the mat here. Keep the hips level as we try and rotate the knee outwards to place your ankle on the supporting thigh. Same side hand as the stout turn knee pushes the knee away. And we're trying to keep the belt line level. Push, 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 start to open up the side of your hip, take a deep breath in. If you'd like, this could be the limits of your stretch. If you're quite tight across the hip area, this could be enough for you. Otherwise, you're encouraged to thread the opposite hand around the side of the thigh. Use a deep exhale where the belly button draws deeper inwards towards the spine as we start to float the second leg off the mat. Now, this is a braced position, i.e. you're using your hands to support you. So it's not quite a double leg tabletop. We're pulling one knee in towards us as we push one out, turn knee away, and we're keeping the breathing fluid here. Don't hold that breath. <sighs> Let the rib cage expand and then deflate. Breathe in and out nice and deeply and let the glutes, let the hamstrings, let the lower body relax. Beautiful, keep that push and pull going using up to 50% of the max strength. Nice work, last breath in and out here. We're gonna stop the push and pull, keep the hands on the legs as the feet lower towards the mat. Let's uncross that unturned knee and let's take it to the other side. T-zone on, single leg tabletop please. Turning the knee outwards, we're placing the ankle on the supporting thigh. Same side hand pushes this knee away, we're keeping the belt line level, so we're looking to open up at the side of the hip. We're breathing in and out nice and deeply for level one of our figure four PNF stretch. If you like, stay here. This is, could be enough for you. Otherwise, making the stretch larger, wrapping the opposite hand around the outside of the thigh, using a deep exhale where the draw, drawing in of your belly button initiates you to pull the knee towards your chest. Now we're pulling this knee in as we keep pushing this out turn knee away. That push and pull is encouraging your PNF stretch to become very intense across the hip joint here and stretching across your piriformis and your glute. A nice deep breath in and out, keep the breath fluid. As you breathe in your stretching here, just imagine that you're letting the workload of your glutes switch off after that nice intense 30 minute session. Good, let's focus a couple more breaths here. Keep that push and pull going. Now, as we finish the session today, I'd like you to give thanks to your body. It's worked really hard for you. And if you enjoyed this 30 minute session, repeat it again and again and again. Last inhale and exhale here. Let's keep the arms attached to the legs so we are keeping the workload from shifting into the back as we place the feet down. Uncross the knees, squeeze the inner thighs and roll onto your side. Come back to your box. 
Realign your hand underneath your shoulder, knee under your hip joint. Switch back onto your T-zone, flattening the upper back. Tuck the toes under, have a little shift forwards and back for a couple of breaths. If you'd like to stretch across that fascia of your feet. Now, if this is a nice stretch, do it. If not, come back to shoulders, over palms, knees under hip joint. We're going to take a deep breath in, coming into a bent knee downward dog. Scoop the belly on the exhale, pushing into your palms, lifting the knees from the mat, hitching the hips high as we drop the head between the arms and trying to push the heels back. You can keep bent knees here, particularly if you've got quite tight hamstrings and calves. For a larger stretch, keep the head relaxed between those arms, straighten out through the knee joints and press the heel bones down. Now a straight leg downward dog is a calf, a hamstring and a lumbar spine stretch. So really push back into the heels with the hips high. Think about creating a, a, a V shape or an A-frame shape, I should say. Take a deep inhale and exhale here, even walking through the heels, coming back to that stretch that we applied through our roll down at the warm up, if you'd like. Now I want you to come back to both heels pressing towards the mat and a bent knee position. As you bend the knees, notice that you drop the head slightly further between the arms. Take a deep breath in. Now on the exhale, scoop the belly. Start to walk your feet, your hands back towards your feet, sorry. And make sure that you've realigned the weight over your tripod at the bottom of the soles. Have a little moment here, bent knees, relaxing the head between those arms, letting the arms relax towards the mat. Take a deep breath in and on the exhale, scoop the belly. Start to push into your tripod. Start to realign your pelvis over your feet as you slowly stack the vertebrae upright. Lift the spine nice and tall for a deep inhale. As you exhale, let yourself switch off. Congratulations. So there you go. There's your 30 minute glute band and ball express workout. Hope you enjoyed this here. If you have any questions at all, message me and Mignon. Otherwise, have a lovely break and I'll see you next time. Bye.